You ready? Welcome to One More. I'm your host, Brian Erickson. Each week, we bring in two new guests. We sit them down on this big old comfy couch, and we ask them why they do what they do. And this week, as every week, uh, is no exception. We have Pamela Flores and making their return, Miko Brando. But first, speaking of returns... Jesse McCormick. Hello. Thank hey. you for having me back. Yeah, no, you passed the 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 test. I'm excited to be here. I'm glad I made it through to the next uh, round of being the de facto co-host. Yeah, no, just wait till we get to the physical challenge. Oh, wow. With that walking boot. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah. I'll no. wait a couple weeks, and then <laughs> then we'll get to that part. Yes, indeed. So, so how, how are you? It's like, yeah. I'm, we're excited. <laughs> like, we were a guest, mm-hmm. and this is, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like... Each week we kind of, you know, each week we bring people in and, you know, very covertly sort of vet them to see if, you know, one of us quits or both of us quits <laughs> who the next host or co-host could mm-hmm. potentially be. Yeah. That's how I got this. That's how I got this gig. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. Our director, Matt's like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so how, how, was your, how was your weekend? You, you did some recording. Yes. Um, actually, I didn't get around to the recording part yet, but I'm coming back to record some more. On Friday the 16th? Yeah. Guess yeah. who else is uh, going in to finish I guess the, Brian. Their, their track? I guess Brian. You guessed correctly. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's cool. So that's for a, a holiday album, right? Yeah. For a holiday album for a, that Matt Dubrow's putting together. For I don't know who that is. I've never heard of him either. No, it's not like his brother is here all the time or that he's been a guest before. Um, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. But don't some know. guy is doing a Christmas record. Yeah, for charity. What charity is it for? I don't know. Do you know? Uh, it I was do, for an I animal do, one. Yeah, I do know. You should know. But <laughs> I kind of, like, we, I do know, but I forgot. We both should it's know. For, uh, it's like for a farm yeah, charity. It, yeah, it's for, like, farm mm-hmm. animals. Yeah. A dog picked it. Yeah, a dog appropriately did pick mm-hmm. it. And, and by a dog picked it, we mean that he, she, like, wrote... No, he Matt Dubrow. He Matt Dubrow wrote it down. The owner of the dog the owner wrote of the dog. Okay. a bunch of different charities on like a bunch of different balls and <laughs> just threw, threw them. <laughs> just like I threw my water bottle <clears throat> and threw them. And then she and went the and dog, grabbed one. Yeah, went and grabbed one. Yeah, and that's how we that's how we picked the charity. Millie's so. a very good dog. She it's picked the well. Best dog. She she really is. What song are you doing? Uh, what Christmas means to me. <laughs> The Stevie oh, who, Wonder song. Oh, oh, it's that's my favorite, a good song. It's my favorite Christmas song. I like. He, I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm interested in doing a song, and he was like, what song? I was like, well, my favorite one's this one. He's like, great, let's do it. Yeah. No. I also threw out "Baby It's Cold Outside" because it's like second favorite, and he was like, we already have a duet. Really? So, yeah. Who's the duet? I don't know. He didn't tell me. Ugh, I don't like that. Eh. But that's that's good. That's good, Stevie Wonder. That's good. That's mm-hmm. good tune. I'm excited. I feel like not a lot of people give it as much love as it it deserves. Well, because, I mean, even when you were like, what Christmas means to me, I'm like, what's that? And then you mm-hmm. said Stephen. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, of course. I have very vivid mm-hmm. memories of like when I was very little and like we have a, a bunch of volumes of the Ultimate Christmas album and volume one, I would always like demand that my dad put it on in the car and be like, skip to track three now. Wow. <laughs> really? Like, what, what's your dad's song? name? Uh, Paul. Paul. That's yes. right. Paul McCormick. Paul McCormick. With his, with his uh, UK accent, right? Yes, Liverpool. Yeah. So if you like, skip to track three. Like, <laughs> Why know. does he sound like a villain? I don't know. In you like know, wacky he, racers. He twirls his, <laughs> you know, he twirls his mustache. Like, <laughs> his, his curly Liverpudlian mustache that he definitely has. Does he really? No. <sighs> That's you really. I got really excited. If you're for going just over puddly and like their mustaches are more kind of Ron Swanson esque. Okay, I'm trying to think of like when Paul McCartney grew a mustache, mm-hmm. and that about it's kind of well, all, to that. when all the Beatles grew yeah, mustaches. They are all liver puddly They are. Yes. 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 A bunch of uh, Randy Scouse gits. Yep. Yeah, as they say. <laughs> anyway, so let's bring out our first guest, <laughs> shall we? She's a singer, a teacher, and an activist whose EP entitled Pieces is available on Bandcamp. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Pamela Flores. I got you. 
Hey Pam, how Hi. are you? Thank you so much for coming. Oh, a handshake. Yeah, I know. I feel you know what would be like really. Uh, there you go. I, I, I feel like if they if they had the close up, if the camera was close up on you, and then just this disembodied hand like <laughs> reached into the frame, that'd be very. That'd be a, a real, a real directorial yeah. uh, trick on the on the part of our crew. Yeah. So. Thank you for coming. Of course. And happy uh, to be here again. Yeah, yeah. Again, we say again. <laughs> Uh, because we tried this, I guess, what, last uh, April, yeah, I think it was? Yeah, I think it was around <clears throat> that time. And uh, we, we kind of, we lost the, the broadcast. So that, uh, this episode was just lost to time. Was, but we're, yeah. we're glad that, you know, several months, uh, almost a, well, yeah, like half a year later, a year. give or take. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that we get to finally do this again, once and for all. Yes. And if we lose it this time, like, that's... Then, you know, it's probably I'm me. I'm just sorry. Yeah, It's probably I'm so just sorry. me. I don't know. Or just, like, Matt has a vendetta against me. <laughs> no, I... You know what it was? It was Chris. Oh, it was. That's why he's on here. That little fucker. Well, we saw him... We saw him, like, he... He walked past Matt's little command center right there and just... Of sorts, or no, like they there was music in the house, yes, like they yes. not like musicians, music, but there was there was a lot of music in the house, yes. uh, growing up. And mm-hmm. and you know, how did that affect you when you were when you were a kid? What kind of like reinforcement did that give you? Um, so my parents, you know, they always encouraged music, they didn't, my mom played guitar, um, but she wasn't professional or might or you know she didn't play out or anything is more so just kind of a little hobby that she had on the side mm-hmm. did she write um, at all n- not that I'm aware of um my grandmother was a writer but yeah um it wasn't I, again as far as I know I don't think my mom wrote maybe she she does maybe she has like a little diary you that, should ooh, yeah I'm you curious. should you should you should you should right? talk to her about that it be, be like so come on sick. like I write like what about you yeah you know, now, she... now I'm really I never thought about that maybe my mom has you like these secret that... songs that are probably so bomb and I I hope so put them out there I don't know yeah wow. I, I hope so you know songwriting begets songwriting yeah in, in exactly. a lot of ways so it might it might be in there it might be like a little secret part of your your own like history that yeah. you don't know about Dang. and how cool would it be to like take a song like that and you know play out right like, play it out or something oh man that would be sick now yeah you've Got me thinking now. Well, you're welcome. But, yeah, thank you <laughs> no. so much for that. No, uh, so, so how old were you when you started, you know, kind of taking an int- uh, interest in, you know, playing guitar, playing music? Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I kind of started singing pretty much like out of the womb. Like, I think I just, you know, came out was like, ah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, most babies come out crying yeah. and you came out, I came like, out like A440, yeah. like perfect. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna hit that high E real quick. Came up yeah. with a finger and yeah, I was like, this. oh yeah, yeah, no, with the hand, <laughs> with the too. Hand. With the hand, yeah, definitely. It's like that is um, one precocious baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel you know, it's always just kind of been been there. I I can't think of a of a memory that didn't involve um, music influencing me and and you know in some kind of way. It's just always been there. Um, well, what's what's your earliest memory of music influencing you then? Oh, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, I have a few memories of, of you know, waking up early in the morning on, on weekends, on like Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, um, before anybody else would be awake. And I would go into, um, into the living room mm-hmm. and I would just start blasting like, it was a mix. It was either in vogue. <clears throat> okay. Um, excellent. Bonnie Raitt. Even better. Or like Aladdin. Yes. <laughs> or a Lion King. Like you know you want to know something? The Aladdin <laughs> soundtrack is the second C D I ever bought. Really? Yeah. Yeah. True story. It's a good one. Do you still listen to it? Uh occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just do. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, can your friends do this? <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great. Well, I mean, a lot of those uh, that time period that you know the '90s were a good were sort of a good time for those like Disney soundtracks. Yeah, you had like Little Mermaid, Aladdin, mm-hmm. Beauty and the Beast, and Lion King, like mm-hmm. just these huge four. Yeah, 
Yeah. Just needed to throw that one uh-huh. No, 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 no. That's that's right, too. I'm just thinking, like, my own experience. No, but I know. No, I know Hercules, too. That's... I figured it needed to be rich, right? No, no, we, lest we leave Hercules. The out. muses. Oh, my God. The muses, the muses had so much soul. Mm-hmm. They did. So much soul. They did. Like... And also, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't leave Pocahontas out, also. Mm. Of oh, course. Yeah. I was actually going to mention Pocahontas, because um, that is a, an early memory I have, is waking up early putting on like Saturday morning cartoons and I miss those I I know and um watching a commercial for Pocahontas and it was just the whole colors of the wind song yeah and I like from the movie or Vanessa Williams no from the movie okay and then like I didn't see anything about it for months and I thought I dreamt it and I just remember talking to my family about it being like no there's some movie coming out it's a Disney movie (laughs) And it's like, I don't know, I don't remember what I was calling it, but it was definitely not Pocahontas. It's like, it's Pah, Paha something, I don't know. <laughs> but I was, I just remember I was so enthralled by it and so curious because it was, it was the only time I saw something about it for months and that song stuck with me for so long and I just remember, I was just like, wow, I love this song. And what did you, you know, what do you think like when it became a big hit and it was and then like when it came inescapable? Out, I was like, ha ha, family, I'm See, not See, I told you guys. Yeah, I was like, I did yes. not just dream this. So you've had uh, so you've had quite an experience as a as a musician, if I understand correctly. Like you've performed, you know, overseas uh, a little bit. Yeah, I lived in Chile for a little bit, and um, you know, played music out there. Did you grow up in this area, like in the Asbury area? I did not. No, I um, grew up in North Jersey. Okay. Um, I was born in Hoboken. Uh, grew up in Jersey City for uh, up for like ten years, and then. Moved to Sayreville and then okay. moved out when I was 18. Lived in New York for a couple of years. Moved to South America. Moved back to Jersey. Um, and now I'm down here. And, and <laughs> when you were living... No, in, here I am. Well, when you were, when you were living in Chile, was that... Um, were, you, were you playing out at all? Were you playing music at that point? Yeah. And, um, at the time, I didn't really play um, much guitar. I kind of... I, I got a guitar at 18, but... Um, you know, kept telling myself that it was going to always be difficult for me, that it just wasn't my instrument because I have little hands. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, oh, these hands, they, they won't let me play. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not say that at all. I just made that up. Yeah. But um, <laughs> anyways, um, I lived with, um, with, my, with an aunt in Chile and she played guitar and she sang. So she kind of helped me out as well while I was out there. Oh, that's great. Um, and kind of helped me learn some chords. Uh, but I played, you know, some interesting, like I played at a school, like I played at a high school, but I played t- to tracks and that was cool. Okay. Yeah, that was really cool. Like All, you like, played guitar with a backing track behind you or just, no, you know, I, sing I just, to a yeah, track? Yeah, I just sang to a okay. backing track. Um, and I did that. I played like, you know, sang at some hotels and, and then, you know, I moved back to New Jersey and that's when I really started to pick up the guitar and and, and what got you to like this area what got you in Asbury <laughs> um uh, an old boyfriend okay yeah sometimes <laughs> I have moved places mm-hmm. for oh, yeah. significant others uh-huh. so yeah sometimes it, it but you know what like that might be gone but you're you're still here and oh, you yeah. continue to make like a really great impression yeah on, you know just this whole area yeah and, and it's and it's made an impression on me for sure I mean I've been here for over four years, and mm-hmm. um, you were you were teaching voice uh, too with uh, with children, mm-hmm. if I understand. Yeah. How does that? Um, how, what what's that like? What's what's it like? Um, and I had a similar conversation with Jamie Kappa, uh-huh. uh, who was in like a week or two ago, something uh-huh. like that, and she was saying, um, or or you know, I asked her a similar thing, like, what is it like keeping kids motivated? Yeah. Well, um, funny you mentioned Jamie. She was one of the first people I met when I moved to Asbury Park. That's um, a great connection. Yeah, she she is one of my closest friends here, mm-hmm. and you know we had like a very similar experience with with kids and how much it's affected us just as musicians. Oh, there goes my phone. Sorry, I don't even know why I have it. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we all we all got them. I know what the fuck. We're just like attached to them. That's um, <laughs> mine's over there. But. Yeah. I'll yeah, see. no, sir. Mine's. mine's here. <laughs> I'll put mine down. Um, so we're, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's. I I love working one on one with with um, students. Mm-hmm. You know, 
teaching music, it's it's really special <clears throat> seeing their progress and seeing how much they want to play music mm-hmm. and how much they will work on it in order to get to the, you know, to the step they want to get to. And do you find that like kids like that have have goals with what they're trying to learn? I I don't know if they know that if they have goals. I think they 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 just want to keep getting better and if they okay. see themselves getting better, they 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 get excited about it, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they just kind of get excited that the one thing that they that they didn't know how to do something in the beginning and then all of a sudden they get it. Mm-hmm. And seeing them get that, you know, I, I even like I used to teach um, at homeschool program and okay. was a nanny when I lived in New York and seeing kids get excited about the fact that they're learning how to read and they're like, oh, shit, I know how to read this whole book now. <laughs> um, like unlocking these different. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like they're leveling up. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really cool. It's like it's really and what's cool. that? What's that make you? How do you feel as the sort of. Uh, you know, kind of custodian of that, of that process. I feel, I don't, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's, I I can't put it into words how, Mm -hmm. how special it is to, to, to be a part of some, of, of somebody's growth, you know, especially a a child, obviously, but, you know, knowing that you've helped even just a little bit and, you know, having that little human become what they want to (laughs) be, it's, it's, pretty damn cool i'm not gonna lie like it's like oh i I helped you with that i love that it's like oh (laughs) now in um a couple years ago you put out an ep called Mm -hmm. pieces and it's when i listen to it it's i i kind of get the the sort of feel um like aesthetically like the way it's kind of set up uh for you know one of those old soul albums because it's Mm -hmm. it's you know like half originals half covers Mm -hmm. so it kind of reminded me of you know Something like uh, like an Otis Redding or Aretha Franklin or some of those old like Stax and Motown and Atco like cool. albums would do <laughs> just in, you know, in construction. And obviously, like you have your own, you know, sort of voice, your own mm-hmm. kind of spin. You put on uh, some of those songs. Mm-hmm. Um, was that part of the process were you were you thinking about that no. when you were making it like no, yeah let's but make thank this sort you for of that because now i'm going to start saying that hey that's i, I mean this <laughs> is like, this yeah is, this was totally yeah we went you know we went in totally we were like let's make a throwback possible. type record yeah, no not at all that was not at all the idea but um that's a really cool concept and i'm gonna start i'm gonna start saying that You're no certainly uh, welcome honestly to. that whole um the whole idea for that ep um it wasn't it wasn't my idea i'm just gonna like flat out say that i you know was approached um by somebody who had heard me sing. he was a, an, an adult student at um the music school i used to work at um and he you know had this uh project in mind that involved his teenage son playing drums for he his okay. te- his uh son who was 16 at the time uh really had uh aspirations to become a session uh, musician so his father was like hey i have the son um i got this kid yeah i, I, I got have this kid son. hanging he's, around he, like i don't know what to do with him he's an he's an amazing drummer um i love your voice do you have any original songs would you be interested in recording i will back you for everything if you want to do it, let me know. I'm like, yeah. that's an opportunity. You can't say no. Like, you can't holy say no. Holy shit! Like, sorry, lots of curse. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. okay we're we're allowed. This is this is NPR. But, okay, I don't know. You're have good. Been, so, like, uh, you're I, already yeah, there. Well, let's you're good. Uh, <laughs> well, um, yeah. So he, you know, approached me with this, with this, um, with this pr- uh, idea for this project, and he was like, "Yeah, I have some covers that." Um, if you'd be interested in doing that too and then we'll do mm. some of your originals like okay yeah so i had did that know, spur like a, a sort of uh writing process yeah, for you 100 kind of finally because, start like really you know getting into writing your own material yeah i mean i have like books on books of you know unfinished songs for years and that kind of had me go back into these books and be like all right what do i still want to finish writing what can i look into and be like yeah that can be something that's sort of decent i don't know but um 
yeah and i just went back to these songs and finished them and that and and then pieces became a thing yeah and and you know we met probably what like a year and a half two years ago sometime in the last like two years and um you know maybe it's just because like after that i sort of knew your name and but i I, you know around that same time like i kind of started seeing your name like around a lot more Mm -hmm. you know uh playing you know bigger and bigger shows and being a part of you know bigger and bigger events and and things like that and um what what does it mean to you to be part of this like part of this this whole community it's pretty unbelievable you know, especially to now now that we know kind of where this started like as a teacher and someone saying hey you want to record like i'll do this for you yeah. and almost you know i don't want to say falling into it but just kind of using the goodwill that you built up to turn it into something um yeah what, what does that all feel like it's i honestly you know it makes me so incredibly grateful that my life has ended up you know here in asbury Mm -hmm. park and that i've been so welcomed by the music community where i you know think there's so much ridiculous talent oh yeah and the fact that you know the majority like the majority of my friends are obviously people i've met through the music community yeah right you know and it's it's just I I mean not to sound like oh like you know Miss America but I'm really grateful. <laughs> <laughs> no no absolutely like and that's and that's that's great to hear that's like humbling to hear. Yeah. Now <laughs> it's been it's been a few years since the EP came out mm-hmm. and how does your inclusion and your kind of you know continued progress uh like we know you're writing and recording something new right now with Mm -hmm. this i mean your band you get one of the best bands (laughs) like going right now just Mm -hmm. those those guys backing you up how does your inclusion and your progress affect the writing and recording did it kind of like that first opportunity do you find that it kind of like lit that fire again and and you know you were like oh yeah no I'm, I'm getting these bigger shows and stuff I, I better get something else out now yeah I um it's just all and is that how is that how you is that how you do it is that your process like a kind of a stimulus and response sort of thing I guess so yeah I mean I'm definitely a a um I work off of emotions like I'm obvious like you guys like both know me I think <laughs> and have seen me play my music it's very emotionally like driven like mm-hmm. oh yeah and I just think like me as a person you know I I am inspired by emotion so I do things out of mm-hmm. um, emotional um because of my emotions yeah, I, I guess right I mean um, you're you're not afraid to like hide what you're feeling and that is very <clears throat> prominent in your music like you, you kind of are able to channel all of this on the surface. That's a really good quality to have, especially when you create something like music or art, you know? Yeah, it's, and honestly, I mean, just having, like, my band, for example, we've been playing Mm -hmm. together for two years, Mm -hmm. and having those guys want to be a part of this is pretty, pretty insane. Mm -hmm. You know, they they are so damn talented, and having them add their, their... own personalities which are all different they all come from such different backgrounds and music and they're just like yeah let's add this element to it or this or that it's so cool you know I'm just it's like really you want to you want to play my like sad girl music like yeah and the answer is yeah of course (laughs) course because I mean it's there's yeah but there's there's a real like there's a real power to you know a lot of a lot of that material and i mean obviously we encourage you anybody that hasn't seen you play anybody that's watching like go. if you haven't seen pamela flores play like go. do yourselves a favor uh, like, go. Um, stay home. I, stop. Yeah, no no stop it stop it so no go <laughs> now i i do want to kind of piggyback off um what you're saying about mm-hmm. you know and what jesse sort of chimed in about too about not being you know, afraid to be expressive in certain ways as we sort of start to wrap up the interview. Mm-hmm. Um, you caught a bit of attention for wearing a very particular shirt. 
uh, recently <laughs> that, you know, commented on our, our most recent Supreme Court uh, yeah. appointee. I was going to say, well, which shirt now? <laughs> no, yeah. no. It's and, kind of become a thing. And I, I had don't... two in mind and then yeah. it narrowed it down. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't want to uh, take away from the Make and Waves interview that you did because you go into it, you know, quite a bit there. Mm-hmm. Um, but my question on that is how important is it to you to send that message and let people know definitively that this is how you feel about a certain aspect of social yeah. justice? Well, I think just in general, having that message um, continuously being being put out there by obviously not just myself, I don't know how much of a, you know, influence I have, but, you know, I think the more that people speak about, mm-hmm. about these, um, these topics um the more something will be done about it yeah um so for those who may not know what the what shirt he's talking about so i made myself a fuck kavanaugh shirt <laughs> um last uh back in september during the whole um the, t- the whole trial i literally just you know went to ac Moore, got one of those screen printing kits bought <laughs> bought a shirt cut it up printed it out just yeah, fuck Kavanaugh right there. Mm-hmm. And um, and you wore it at uh, at the See Here Now festival, like kind of, you know, pre-show, warm-up show, like the the kind of night before yeah. at the hotel. So, you know, all eyes were kind of on town for that weekend. Yeah, so, that was such an insane show. You know, <laughs> you, but you were able to sort of use that platform to, you know, to get more, you know, to get more people to you know, engage with that message. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Anytime I wear, like I, you know, wear that, like women don't owe you shit shirt all the time. Yeah. And I, 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 it's not, I wouldn't say I get nervous, but I do kind of second guess whether or not I should, you know, like get like yeah. a, a negative response from mm-hmm. what I'm, what I'm wearing. But also I like, don't care enough about the negative responses that I get because this is something that I really believe in, you know, and it's something that needs to be said. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I, my music may not be exactly political, but I think with everything that I've done within the past two years, people know where I stand and what, um, what I really believe in and, 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 um, what, you know, uh, for example, like the show that I did where I wore the fuck Kavanaugh shirt, um, I all of the sales I made uh, with CDs all went to NJ Casa, which is the New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault. Okay. And it was ninety dollars that we raised, and but you know that was that's that's more than but zero. That's great, yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's, that's really generous of you <laughs> yeah. to do that. And um, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. Did that's I that's that's the whole. Well. Yeah, please. Like, if you guys interrupt me, like. <laughs> means I have to do less work. I, I just wanted to um I just wanted to add that like when you do wear shirts like that like even though like I have I also have shirts that have like, you know, like I don't know, the future is accessible like, you know, stuff like that like that are bigger opinions that yeah. people don't want to talk about, but like when you do wear stuff like that, it's important to because at least one person's going to look at that and be like, I wanted to say that out loud and someone else did, so now I have the courage to do it too. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's really important to like show where you stand because it gives people who might not have had the courage to speak up before, now they can and they will. Yeah. And they'll speak up louder. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So. I feel like if all of us are, you know, speaking out about what we believe in and what is right, then it will no longer be taboo to talk about, you mm-hmm. know, that maybe even people will second guess their own behaviors with one another. Yeah. That, you know, m- maybe in some way people will actually start treating each other better. Um, that's, that's what I, I hope for the world. Again, I feel like Miss America right now, like, oh, world peace. But no, also no, like, no. yeah, fucking world peace. Like, yeah, I, don't, I fucking want that. Who doesn't want that? Mm-hmm. Some like shitty asshole doesn't want that, but that's fine. Yeah. Treat them with love too. There you go. Yeah. But. And you know what? <laughs> Vote him out of office tomorrow. Mm. I'll get to that. Yes. And I feel yes. like that's, that's a good, oh, don't leave Jesse hanging. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and I, I think that's a perfect way to, to cap this interview. Yeah. Pamela Flores, we're going to hear a couple of uh, couple songs for you in a little bit. Thank you again so much for coming. Thank this has you. been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right, Pamela Flores, <laughs> Thank you. Thank everybody. You. Vote tomorrow. <clears throat> 
This week's episode of One More with Brian Erickson is brought to you by the Asbury Park Music Foundation. The Asbury Park Music Foundation raises money to support youth music programs throughout Asbury Park that provide lasting skills, self-confidence, and life-changing experiences for underserved kids in our community. This includes funding for the Hip Hop Institute at the Boys and Girls Club of Monmouth, in-school music programs at Hope Academy, and scholarships for kids to attend the Lake House Music Academy. Asbury Park Music Foundation also sponsors events such as Suburbia Friday Night, which brings a mix of hip-hop and rock on the first Friday of every month. If you're interested in keeping Asbury Park's legacy of music alive by making a meaningful difference for the underserved youth in our community, head to asburyparkmusiclives.org to make a donation. And while you're there, pick up an as pick up. I messed this up last time I was here too. Pick Sorry, up a music great, saved Jesse. Asbury Park T-shirt. All proceeds make it possible to support <laughs> music saved my life youth programs. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. One more is also sponsored by You Don't Know Jersey, founded in 2010 by. Alice and Ed Maziak, You Don't Know Jersey has been covering all the best music, food, sports, art, and cultural events that the Garden State has to offer for nearly a decade. Hey, Liam, do you want to know where you can find your local polling place so that you can go participate in the divine experiment of democracy tomorrow? You go to vote.org to do that. But if you wanted to find a coffee shop afterwards, then we can help you out. Hey, Nash, did you want to find out where you can find the hippest bar with all the TVs tuned into the most comprehensive election coverage in Mercer County? Of course you do, oh, yeah. you, you damn policy wonk. That is what my script says. So please, <laughs> when, whether you're in High Point, Cape May, or anywhere in between, check out youdon'tknowjersey.com for all the latest. You don't know Jersey, but we sure do. Thank you, Jesse. They're a dance rock band from Trenton whose EP Lemonade Lemonade is available on Bandcamp. Let us welcome back Miko Brando. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tip the couch. Ooh, like that uh, thing is, that's so, oh, yeah. Yeah, the last one. <laughs> Well, that's why we don't have the last one because you guys, you guys just tipped it back into the wall. That was me. That was but completely look, now you. Now you have a much nicer couch. I know we did with Thank like you. cat claws on Welcome. it. I don't know where this came from, but that's all right. That's all right. We don't. So so. Um, that also came from the burns. Did it? Oh goodness. Before we rolled, before we rolled, Joe fought for the middle. Now he's not in the middle. Yeah. Do you want the middle? I don't. You know. No, 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 no. We're, we're here. I don't we're care. Here. We're here. I'm sorry. I'm comfortable now. Um, so I, I wanted to start by, you know, saying first off, I'm I'm happy you're back in the studio. Um, though I'm I'm sorry it's kind of under a set of circumstances that I don't think anyone would really wish upon uh, anyone else. And you know, for that reason, I didn't really prepare this huge list of of questions. But I'm still happy to have a conversation if you guys are. Absolutely. Um, I was reading two guys one review who have been really kind to your band uh, since you started. And uh, they quoted Eric Stams, uh, who said, a band without an expressive drummer is a band without a backbone, and where would any of us be without a backbone? And um, you lost your drummer, Anthony, to an overdose last May. Uh, where's Miko Brando now? Not just as a band, but you know, as people. It came up. The band came up, I guess, a couple of days later. It was relatively quick after mm -hmm. Anthony died, just because it's such a big part of our lives. Um, and I think I, I get these two mixed up sometimes. There's a, there's a fourth. There's a fourth Jamie. Yeah, of course, here. Jamie. She's yeah, directing. She's practicing for directing a play right now. Oh, so good she's for her. Right now, but yeah. Um, but, but I I can't. It, those days were kind of like a blur, so I forget which the conversations. Oh which, yeah, of who, course, who of I talked to, but. Um, uh, it came up pretty quickly. One of them said, "You know, we wanted we we should still keep doing this because Anthony would want us to keep going." They might have even both said that. I'm not sure. Um, and we also made it a pretty big point. I forget which one. We like we let ourselves have permission to have a good time. You know what I mean? Because sometimes so it's like it's it's like such a heavy thing, and you're like you almost feel gu guilty joking around within a few days afterwards. And I. Was that you or was that Well, you? yeah, you I just gotta, you have to continue to live your life. Yeah. I mean, Anthony would have wanted it that way. So, you know. And we were like, let's still, like, we can't just, we can't let ourselves get sucked into this downward spiral. We've we got to let ourselves. Because, like, we hang outside, outside of the band, too. Yeah, we, yeah. You know, we do other things. Um, 
we, we came <laughs> everything up with together. This, we came up <laughs> Bike with a slogan called Party Summer USA, which is basically our, our YOLO. Okay. Yeah. You know, Hashtag can Party can Summer you, USA. Can you hear him okay? If not, I'll pass him the mic. Is Jim? Uh, he's good? I might pass him the mic. Pass him the mic? Are we, how are we, pa- how are we passing mics? You can just lean sound? over me if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do this. Yeah, I mean, let's well. get close. <laughs> Party summer USA. So I think, you know, we're such a tight knit group, you know, we'll, uh, <laughs> I think we'll make through it, you know? Well, no, that's, sorry, what's, I, I don't know, that's the best I got, guys. That's... Just project, Jim, we're fine. All right, all right. Yeah, don't whisper, please. But, uh, but um, yeah, no, so you... Yeah, I was going to say, since, you know, since that happened, and I, I mean, I know everybody was, you know, kind of close as friends before, but since it happened, I've I've seen a lot, you know, you guys post on Instagram or, you know, where wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, like, you know, you like took a long bike ride, you take hikes, you go on road trips together. Um, and, you know, how, how important was it? Well, like you said, you didn't want to deny yourself a good time, but, you know, how, how important do you think it is to, you know, kind of turn that focus inward and, you know, kind of try and keep that positive energy going, but also allow yourselves to to feel it. Because I, I think, you know, if I could opine, like, I think that's just as important too. like allowing yourself to say, you know what, like this sucks. Um, yeah, there's plenty of that too. <laughs> there's definitely plenty of that. And you can do that by yourself too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody handles it their own way. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, I find it so admirable though that you guys were able to sort of, you know, kind of, kind of bring it in uh, a little bit. And, and I mean, if I could speak personally, you know, I've lost loved ones to addiction also. And, you know, I didn't do that. You know, I did kind of like shut it down and, you know, I, I kind of regret that now. Um, and you know, you, you guys are a great example of, I mean, everybody, everybody grieves in different ways. Everybody deals with things in different ways, but you know, if you're, if you're able to, if you're capable of it, or you have that like support system that will allow you to sort of, you know, bring it in and get tight, like you should, you should do it. Um, because it'd be really easy for you guys to just have gone your own ways. Um, but it's, I, I think it's great. Um, and I'm sorry I'm doing all this talking. Like I should, oh, you yeah. know. It's okay. Um, Everybody goes through it at some point in their life. It's actually Jim's cousin also. I think yeah. Jim's cousin. So. Yeah. yeah. And he really brought the band together. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think I mentioned in the last interview too, I was thinking about leaving the band. I was unsure we weren't making any progress. You know, and I bring in Anthony as you know, as a, a last ditch and, you know, he really was the last missing piece. Yeah. You know, he added the comedy too that we needed and <laughs> um, I'm sure the two of you. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun and I think it would be a disservice to his memory to just let all that go, you know? Yeah. Now, you know, I also want to talk about art all night because you know, I, after you made that decision to stay together and, and move forward, I think the first show you had kind of, I know you had a couple of shows, you, you sort of canceled or suspended them. And then the first time you guys were supposed to come back, supposed to be, you know, art all night, this weekend long festival that brings your home city of Trenton together, you know, just the arts community of, you know, people of all stripes. Um, and there was an, a shooting and it, um, I mean, if you want to, we can full stop. And we've got, so it gave us this chance. How we practice the Jamie's. In, or or just, maybe I could give you the things. easier one and say, has it uh, changed? I don't the, think you it's know. changed the mission. I mean, we're basically going to just concentrate on writing and we're mm-hmm. going to do that a little bit differently now, uh, any which way we can. A little bit in the studio, a little bit together. We have parts. I think we know what the album's going to sound like the next time we do it. We've already started recording um, one out of two songs for different comps. Okay. And we're kind of playing in the studio and just um, adding layers and just having fun with it. It's it's, weird because we had kind of already written the album for the 
we've chosen the songs and the, the main ideas. I'm sorry. In our heads. In our heads. We had written the, the album. Where where all things reside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had it kind of mapped out. And, and we have recordings of practices. That's going to be the toughest part, I think, for me, is like being like going to a drummer and being like, hey, this is what Anthony played. And like hearing Anthony and being like, okay, can you do something kind of like this? Is it? There's yeah. only about a song and a half that's like that, yeah. though. So no, we'll, no, we'll no. Yeah. We, we, have, we have Satisfy. Well, I don't know if you played that. No, nothing was set in stone. Though. Okay, well, well, we have I work it, with it. Either way, there are recordings. Do you think recordings. it's going to be hard to you know go back and listen to those practice uh you know probably was gonna say practice tapes but really you know those practice recordings and go to a drummer like do you think it it i mean i i assume you know you're gonna work with a drummer who is you know empathetic toward the situation but how much how much play are you gonna give whoever kind of sits in on these recordings with with you guys it'll, it'll just be a collaboration and it's funny you know it's funny because you understand this like how tough is this going to be? Like, and I'm like, if regular people are watching this show, they're going to be like, they're they're just recording songs. But like to musicians, this is a big deal. Like to us, this is a big deal. Yeah. You know, like how do you work with a drummer to play these parts? Like that's important to us. Yeah. To musicians, like it's a big thing. So chemistry. Yeah. So I'm glad you know you at least you understand. Oh like, yeah, of it's course. A tough gig. Um, well, we're just going to feel it out. Honestly, we're just kind of, you know, micro goaling it right now. Um. I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm out of questions. I, <laughs> that's I wanna, cool. If you want to bring Pan back on, that's cool too. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I kind of did that on purpose, like, because I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I want to give you guys the last word. You didn't have anything to lighten the mood? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I didn't really know if that, I, I mean, I know like off camera, you know, I mean, let's just be real. Like, you know, I mean, we've all known each other for a good number of years. I mean, Jim, you and I have known each other for 15 years now. Has it been 15? It's been... It's been, think of the Titanic lady, it's been 84 <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> thank you, Pam. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, off camera, like, yeah, have we, have we not made light of this, but off camera, yeah, have we joked about it? Like, oh, not about I, the I situation, yeah, but yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, we've, because that's human nature. It, it's life. It's, it's, you know, it's and, how you get through this yeah. stuff. I mean, the whole thing, I think, lightened us up as a band. You know, the whole Party Summer USA thing. Because we're all in our mid-30s. We're, we know we got, like, a good 30, 40 years left. You know, it went, it went by like that. I'll you take know, that. And, yeah, and you know, well, probably me and you. And uh, it, it's definitely lightened me up. So, you know. We're a bunch of goofballs. Yeah, you know, no, you, like, you totally are. And so of, it, it was kind of, you know, I mean, the last time you were here, uh, you, uh, you guys literally put a hole in the put wall, a hole in the wall yeah. trying to get all five of you on our tiny couch. Uh, you know, and that was a great interview and, um, you know, I, I guess like, and it was great. I mean, and, and it was funny too, even anecdotally, you were telling me afterward, you know, I think you and I kind of did a little like postmortem, uh, on the show, uh, on the interview, you know, a couple days after and you said, you know, Anthony, like, or maybe you too, Scott, like, you're like, on the car ride up, Anthony wouldn't shut the I hell up. I was yeah, just we telling just And as about soon that. as he sat Everybody on the couch, it was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. I play drums. And on the ride back, and, right back to just yeah. motor mouth and all the way home. <laughs> so it's like, great, you got this chance to, to just preserve this interview, uh, you know, forever this is like six words in yeah. in the in the fifteen minutes. Like we did a podcast, and I was like, Anthony, what are you doing? Like you never shut up. He's like, I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time ever I heard him say, just he's taking listening. it in, right? <laughs> um, so how about how about you know for uh, one last time we and you know we'll when we do our show rundown, obviously we'll we'll give it one more. Uh, you. But you know, right into the camera. What's you Where's know my camera. Yeah, cool. we're, we're just, yeah, right. Uh, one more time into the camera. Let's uh, you know, let's let's plug this show and and talk about you know the bands that are going to be on and and what you're going to be doing there. Sure. So the bands are Nico Brando, our first show back in over six months. Um, Pissed, Cheeky, Ray Strife and Il Omega, and DJ Flowston Paradise is DJing between uh, sets, and it's at the Mill Hill in Trenton. And it's this Saturday, November 10th. 
be there by eight, which means nine. Which means ten. No, no, no. This one we have to. Oh, it is going to go. actually be yeah. on time. Um, <laughs> it's a donation-based thing. Five bucks works. You know, if you don't have it, we'll let you in either way. And the most important thing is to kind of spread the word. If you know anyone who needs help, send them our way. We can point them in the right direction. Um, you guys. You pretty much said it all. Yeah, but what, yeah, now do I plug yeah. or talk? I whatever you guys. I mean, this is seemingly the end of the interview. So, I like I said, I wanted to give you guys the the kind of last word on it. Oh well, we're gonna have a song on a comp pretty soon, right? Mm-hmm. We're writing a song with Frank in the studio. Yeah, and that'll be out hopefully soon. Okay, what uh, what's the comp gonna be? Is it with a label? Is it you know with an organization? Which one we what's... just did, um, I, dude. You know, like when you have all these albums in your head, and then you walk into a record store and you forget. Oh, you literally uh, it just happens put out a every song single time on a comp, and I can't think of the guy's name right now. <laughs> well, you know what? Let us know, and yeah. you know we'll mention it when it comes out, or if it's already out, we'll just mention it. The next one's time. already out, um, but well, you got to tell me. I got. I want to hear this stuff. Yeah, yeah, we have two more coming out. Yeah, like, come but, on, guys, dude. Dude, it's been a rough year. No, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? Then let me. Um, I, I don't know, thanks Jim, for having you? us on. Yeah, thank and you. I, yeah, thanks for coming. I like the new uh, the new digs. Right, this we 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 married up a little bit. Did. Right? Nice. Um, well, you know what? Go see him this Saturday, November tenth, and oh. and you know, um, if you haven't already, let me be the first to say welcome back, Nico Brando. Back ish, ish, back ish. We're back for a show and then just recording for a while. But yeah, we're back ish. Well, you know what? Welcome back. Thank you. Nico <laughs> Brando, everybody. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Move this over. Thank you so Can much. Please have a microphone. Oh, yes, yes. Stall. Uh, well, I can't. I don't have a microphone, so no one would hear me. Oh, okay. we can still hear you. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so that theater guys... degree didn't go to waste. It would be projecting my voice everywhere. I mean, it did a little bit, but it's, you know, it's a theater degree. <laughs> Hi, Mom and Dad. <clears throat> Shall I? Here are your events for the week of November 5th. Monday, November 5th, we've got Fire is, in Mo Fire is Motion, Club Night, and Secret Mountain at the Mill Hill Basement right now. Go there and text and drive. Matt Smith says it's okay. Why? Every week. <laughs> That. Matt Smith condones it. Punk Monday featuring OC45 and Burn, Burn, Burn at the Wonder Bar, and that's at 8 p.m., which is also right about now. Text and drive. Matt Smith says it's okay. It's Tuesday, November 6th. Happy birthday to Rachel Anna Dobkin, you beautiful musical cherub. Go to Spotify and listen to her album. It came out two weeks ago, and it is amazing. When we also have Art After Hours at the Zimmer Zimmerly Art Museum in uh, Rutgers University. That's at 5 p.m. Wednesday, November 7th, happy birthday to my friend, my foe, my Fernie bro, Matthew Fernicola. We've got a show with Cheem, Shred Flintstone, Harrison Lipton, and Shot at the Asbury Park Brewery. That's at 7 p.m. We have a show with Scout, Brother Martin, Matthew Runciman at the Asbury Hotel. That's at 8 p.m. Thursday, November 8th, happy birthday to Joe from Miko Brando. <laughs> happy birthday. We've got, we've got Kim and Dave at Novita Bistro at 6 p.m. Dine Side, uh, Voices in Vain, Zion, and Senseless at Boon Tunes at 6.30 p.m. Sourland is opening for Jounce featuring Danny Tamborelli of The Adventures of Pete and Pete at John and Peter's at 9 p.m. So make sure you go there, you blowholes. <laughs> Friday, November 9th, with Rhythm and Words featuring Kathy Quintana, 599C Chestnut Street in Union at 7 p.m. Probably a house show, uh, if there's an actual address. Speaking of house shows, Mike Montre Band at 118 North Wayne. That's actually the name of the venue. I had no idea. I just played there. That's at 8.30 p.m. The Barbarians, Wet Brain, and Judo Chop at Bond Street Bar at 9 p.m. We've got Faithful Faithless, Brother I, Ed Kimball, and The Rips at John and Peter's at 9.30 p.m. And then Madonna Karaoke Night at Mill Hill Basement at 10 p.m. That sounds like fun. Saturday, what? Go. Yeah, can we? Go. Okay, yeah, totally. I'm not, I'm completely serious. I don't know if I'm actually. Ah, oh, you monster. 
Saturday, November 10th. Happy birthday, Dan Amato, the most sentimental of all the gentlemen. Nightbirds, conmen, wall breaker, and school drugs at Asbury Park Brewery at 7 p.m. Then we've got the Fight for Life Trenton Opioid Outreach Concert at Mill Hill Basement, 8 p.m. Go there. You do not want to miss this. We've got Brother JT, RGD, and Naughty Clouds at Pino's? Pino's. Pino's. In Highland Park at 8.30 p.m. And then finally, Sunday, November 11th, we've got the 90.5 The Night Presents Brunch on the Boards featuring Devin Alana and Ben Resnick, two of my favorite people in the universe, at the Langosta Lounge in uh, Asbury Park at 1 p.m. We've got... I said in. I don't know. I had to finish the sentence. We've got Jillian Allen, Broken Angels at the Brighton Bar at 6 p.m. And then close out your weekend at the New Street Balcony in Metuchen as Brittany on Fire presents Friendsgiving featuring... Quentin Smith, Nomad, Catch Me If You Can, Renette Smith, RJ Nobles, Joe Galupo, Devin Alana, Brian Rothenbeck, Jesse Elliott, and Brian Erickson at 3 p.m. I've never heard of him. And now, without further ado, please welcome Pamela Flores. Thank you. All right, guess I'll just start singing. Own hair, blue eyes, sweet smile, too scared to cry. He's just a boy, his heart's broken on the bedroom floor. I like the way his mouth moves. When he talks, when he's trying to be cool but inside, he's dying for a girl who can barely love him. It's not a new sensation. We're still playing the same shit. I can't keep picking up the pieces. No. Cause I can't sing another sad song And I'm sorry that she did you wrong But I can't spend another day Showing you that I won't do the same Nah, 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 nah Love the way I laugh. She still got a hold, even though I'm the one you run to. But I can hold on to. Still the same situation about a boy who's been played with. I up the pieces no cause I can't sing another sad song and I'm sorry that she did you wrong but I can't spend another day showing you that I won't do the same nah 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 I'm sorry I'm sorry strong enough to be the one to take your pain away cause I'm still healing here just the same thank you it is really hot up here with these lights Woo. all right uh 
Do I do another one, I guess? One, one more with Pamela Flores. Yeah. All right. You're good. You have up to three more. Okay. Um, all right, let's do one of my first songs. This one's called Fade Away. It's off of the pieces uh, AP. It's like all done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Pamela Flores, Miko Brando for Jesse McCormick, live from the Asbury Park Music Foundation. I am, I have been, and I remain Brian Erickson. Go to the Mill Hill on Saturday night. We'll see you guys next week. Ooh.